Corby Face and Body Specialist presents Epto. Siya ay kilala bilang anak ng dating House Speaker Sunny Belmonte at sikat na mamamahayag na si Betty Go Belmonte. Pagkatapos ng mag-aral sa kolehiyo ay nagtungo siya sa iba't ibang bansa upang ipagpatuloy ang kanyang career bilang archaeologist. Naging volunteer teacher din siya sa liblib na lugar ng bukid noon para magturo sa mga kabataan. Sa ngayon, gumagawa siya ng kanyang pangalan bilang vice alkalde ng lungsod ng Quezon. Sa F-Talk, kilala din natin kung sino si Maria Josefina Go Belmonte o mas kilala sa pangalang Joy Belmonte. Welcome to F Talk. Good morning, Maite. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here in your show. Yes. Okay. I would. I would like to talk about you. Let's talk about your childhood. You have very famous parents, right? But how were you as a child? How, how was I was as a child? No. Um, uh, I was a good child. <laughs> <laughs> good <enough. laughs> no, I am the only daughter uh -huh. among four children. Uh -huh. And my three brothers are much older than me, so I was actually an accidental baby. Um, and uh, my dad was a, and my mom were a little upset that I was not planned, but then uh, they were quite happy to have a girl. So, so uh, I did not live a, ve a very sheltered uh, childhood uh, mm -hmm. as compared to other only daughters. Uh, and youngest daughters because my parents were both very very active in their respective careers. But growing up, do you know your parents were famous? No, I didn't, but mm -hmm. I knew that they were working. And uh, so I was raised in an environment where parents were working for the benefit of the country because both were public servants in, in a way. My father was uh, in government and my mother was in the private sector, but she was in media. Yes, okay. So where did you study as a child? I studied in um, the rival school where you study. <laughs> it's called Poveda Learning Center. Yes. Uh, I studied there all my life until college, and I went to the Ateneo de, de Manila University. And then after that, you did your graduate study somewhere, right? And then I, I was actually more interested in archaeology. That is my uh, childhood dream, mm -hmm. which I decided to pursue. Mm -hmm. So I did anthropology at the Ateneo, then I went to the United Kingdom to study archaeology. And when I came back um, from my studies, I taught at the University of the Philippines. Uh, you taught what? Archaeology and Museum and Heritage Studies. Masasabi mang magkaibang mundo ang archaeology at ang politika, naniniwala si Joy na ang pag-aaral sa nakaraan ay nakatulong sa kanya para maintindihan ang pangangailangan ng kanyang mga kababayan kung paano bibigyan ito ng magandang kinabukasan. My dream was really to become an archaeologist, mm -hmm. and I was not at all interested in politics. Yes. But and actually, I remember you going to places, to different countries, to... Well, naguhukay ka. Oo nga. Oh. Yan, yan unusual yun mm -hmm. uh, for a girl. No? It's a very mm -hmm. unusual career for a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started doing archaeology in this country, siguro mabibilang mo lang yung mga archaeologists sa isang kamay. Mm -hmm. At lalo na yung mga babae. Siguro dalawa lang kami yung babae, yung archaeologists, o tatlo, mm -hmm. uh, nagpa-practice dito. No? Pero saan kang mga countries nagpupunta para maghukay-hukay? Well, Nag-train ako sa, uh, ng aking theoretical studies sa United Kingdom, mm -hmm. pero sa aking fieldwork, nag-specialize ako sa Southeast Asian uh, archaeology. So, nag-hukay ako sa Thailand ng ilang mga buwan, mm -hmm. uh, nag-work din ako sa Cambodia, uh, sa, sa Laos, konting ikot-ikot doon, Malaysia. Uh, tapos yung, pero yung thesis ko was really focused um, on the Philippines. Sa so Philippines, where, which areas have did you go to? So yeah. dito, actually, it's very interesting because mm -hmm. our textbooks will only talk about uh, the Philippines history as starting when the Spaniards came. But mm -hmm. actually, we have a very, very rich culture before the Spaniards came mm -hmm. that I think have to, has to be imparted to our people so they realize that we are not, we, we are a rich 
um, culture, a uh, developed community, even before the Spaniards came. No? So, um, I, I did excavations in Batangas and even in Manila. Mm -hmm. Underneath in Chamorros is an mm -hmm. old mm -hmm. civilization. Saan mo dinadala yung mga artifacts na nakukuha mo? So, yung mga artifacts, syempre, um, ano yan, pag-aari yan ng um, estado. No? So, if you're working in a university, um, in a legitimate or excavation or with a national museum, we have to turn everything over to the government. Baka matanong mo, anong connection ng archaeology sa politika? Ito okay. yun. Alam mo, uh, Maite, one time, gusto ko mag-excavate sa Manila. Mm -hmm. um, kasi yun, napakayaman ng Manila. Mm -hmm. Nakikita natin yan sa mga uh, libro ng ating mga Spanish colonizers that they talk about the communities in Manila. Uh, and I wanted to do an excavation there. And pumila ako, napakatagal. Pumila ako ng ilang araw, ilang oras para lang makausap ko yung mayor or any person of authority mm -hmm. to ask for permission and support. No? And hindi ako, hindi ako, ano eh, hindi ako hinarap. Parang hindi siya priority okay. ng pamahalaan. And that's one thing siguro that made me realize. Um, and, and kasi apart from archaeology, I also had other advocacies like women's rights, children's rights. Mm -hmm. And I realized that Siguro even if we have very pure intentions mm -hmm. and we want to do good things, um, if we are not in a position of leadership, it's very hard also to, to make these visions come true. For more than three decades now, the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation has been a dependable partner of the government in changing the lives of the marginalized sectors. Over 70% of its earnings go to the government and community development projects. As PICOR fulfills its commitment to the nation, it will keep on inspiring, giving, and caring for those in need. Because in our journey to become a better nation, no Filipino should be left behind. So, paano mga nakilala yung asawa mo kung hindi dito sa environment? Paano mo nakilala? Sa bar? <laughs> Parang ikaw din. Di ba sa mga nakilala yung asawa mo? <laughs> so, um, ano lang, taga-tanayo din siya. Okay. Ah, hindi kami magkakalala, pero I was watching the World Cup. Fan mm -hmm. ako ng World Cup. Mm -hmm. no? At uh, nung mga panahon na yun, wala pang uh, cable channels na nagkikerry ng World Cup soccer. So, kailangan manood ka sa isang bar, sa restaurant, sa hotel. Mm -hmm. At nandun ako, nanonood ako ng game. At siya rin nandun, mag-isa rin siya. So, ano, nagpakilala siya sa akin. Mm -hmm. Ang ano doon, nakakatuwa. Uh -huh. Kasi nung nanonood ako, yung una niyang tinanong sa akin, yung kanyang pick-up line, uh -huh. Joey, ikaw ba yung archaeologist? Okay. E di syempre, parang nakakatuwa. Kasi ang ibig sabihin doon, medyo, um, culture nitong taong ito, okay. tapos me medyo um, magaling siya mag-research, parang hindi yung traditional na pick-up line. Parang in other words, na-impress ako na, oh, um, may value pala sa kanina yung trabaho ko. Kasi yung, when mm -hmm. I mention sometimes na archaeologist ako, nagpa pinagtatawanan ako ng mga tao eh, kasi hindi nila naiintindihan. So I always have to say, watch Discovery Channel yeah. uh, para uh -huh. you understand how important this job is. No? Oh, but I understand you're a very supportive wife. Sumama ka sa kanya, di ba? Para nung nag-aral siya ng kanyang masters. Yeah, he studied uh -huh. an MBA. He's actually a doctor. Mm -hmm. Nakatapos siya sa UP, PGH. Uh, kaya lang, after finishing med school, nakita niya na hindi pala siya talaga pang doktor. No? Uh, mm -hmm. He was interested in entrepreneurship um, and in the tech industry in particular. So, nag-aral siya sa Stanford University and I went with him there. Oh, oh. At ilan yung anak niyo? Isa lang. So, how do you deal with your family? Y yung time mo, paano may nahati between your work and your family considering na very busy ka? Well, medyo mahirap siya. Diyan, yeah. diyan ang medyo challenge na kailangan ko pang i-perfect bilang, bilang nanay. No? But, um, Sinusubukan ko at least pag linggo, okay. uh, kalahati ng araw, eh, eh, hindi na ako nagtatrabaho um, okay. para may, po, may oras sa pamilya. But having said that, okay. I grew up kasi in that environment eh, where okay. both parents were also working. Mm -hmm. So, yung mindset ko was always that parents are, are working. And um, um, hindi, hindi ako lumaki na nasa bahay lang yung nanay ko. Okay. So, I trained my son habang bata pa na, na son... Anak, yung mga nanay at tatay mo, kailangan maghanap buhay, ha? At hindi ibig sabihin nun, hindi kailangan mo mahal. Kailangan, mo lang, kailangan lang natin mag-adjust na ganito ang lifestyle natin. So, very independent naman siya. At, at ngayon, nauunawaan nga niya. At ngayon, kapag late na nga ako sa mga sked, siya pa nagpapaalala na kailangan mo nang umalis, ma'am. Kailangan mo nang magtrabaho. So, you so, already had him before you entered politics? I, I, I was pregnant with him uh, mm -hmm. during the campaign period um, on my first run uh, for vice mayor. 
sa loob ng tatlong termino bilang vice alkalde ng Quezon City, palagi niyang inuuna ang kapakanan ng kanyang mga kababayan sa lungsod. Ilan sa mga programang nagawa ni Joy ay ang good governance sa local legislative system. Kasunod na dyan ang pangangalaga sa lahat ng sektor, lalo na sa mga kababaihan, kabataan, solo parents, may kapansanan, senior citizen, at ang LGBT. What do you think is your well greatest accomplishment as uh, Vice Mayor of Quezon City? Uh, ang dami naman kasi noon, uh -oh. but uh, well, I... I... Siguro yung mga paborito mo. <laughs> Kasi marami tayong mga trabaho as vice mayor. No? So you, you do ordinances, um, you spearhead legislation, isa yun, no? And I think I have come up with very relevant and important pieces of legislation. That are, But your advocacy is children and yeah. women so, and... So lahat ng mga advocacies ko na gawa ko. Like I came up with a children's code. Of course, kasama ko yung Sangguni Ampal Lunsod. We have a children's code of Quezon City that protects children, especially against abuse. Um, and other things, no? Uh, nandiyan lahat ng rights ng isang bata. It's a rights-based approach to, to um, um, caring for our city's children. Meron tayong legislation on housing, and I think we're the first city to come up with a comprehensive housing code of Quezon City. But one of my most, um, I think, insignificant accomplishments was a piece of legislation called the Barangay Seal of Good Housekeeping. Okay. And actually, this is inspired by the DILG's uh, Seal of Good Local Governance Award that they give to cities and municipalities and provinces. But I adopt it for the barangays because I believe that good governance doesn't just start in cities. It starts in the lowest uh, level of, of governance, which is the barangays. And we were the first city to do that. And uh, because of that, uh, natuto yung mga barangay natin, good financial management, uh, people participation, accountability and transparency. So we were able to train our barangays towards good governance. So anong support yung binibigyan ng City Hall sa kanila? Aside from the usual training? Yeah, so there's yeah. training. Uh -huh. the, the, the city government gives training, a lot of training. I remember you and I talking about putting a children's museum a long time ago yes. somewhere in Quezon City, in yes. the Forest Park in Quezon City. But yeah. now you're in position. Yes. So, na actualize mo na ba yung dream mo na yun? Na yes, na actually, museum? there is a museum in the Quezon Memorial Circle. That was one of my projects and my uh -huh. even my first term. It was It's called QCX. No? Mm -hmm. And it's not... Just uh, for children, it's actually a history museum of Quezon City, but it's very interactive. So mm -hmm. it's good for all ages, no? And it's it's attractive to even foreigners, no? And the reason why it's an interactive museum is because you know the traditional concept of a museum, which is you know dusty artifacts, parang hindi na naiintindihan ng tao yung value. Pero pag inincorporate ko sa digital technology, mas nangingani yung mga tao na matutunan ang kanilang kasaysayan. This is in Quezon City Circle. Yes. Pero meron isang parang building doon sa Quezon City Hall na initiative mo rin. Is that a library or another form of a museum? That is the Quezon City Library. Uh -huh. So that is also, that is of course the, pro the project of Mayor Herbert Bautista. But I think that I played a big role in it because, uh -huh. you know, I when I was living abroad, Uh -huh. with my when with my husband when he was studying and also uh -huh. when I was myself studying I saw that that uh, libraries were really so important no? uh -huh. uh, public libraries uh, students could study there until midnight may mga libraries na 24 hours bukas uh -huh. and I told the mayor that it is I think one of the most basic services that we have to offer to our people yung pagkakaroon ng isang magandang library and I'm grateful naman that na napaipinagawa na itong bagong library na to. I'm inviting all of you to visit us here at the banquet. We have our pasalubong, we do have our Sunday buffet, and we have coffee shop as well. So we are located here at Arnoldus Road, Aguinaldo Highway, Tagaytay City. Kamakailan lang, nagproklama na siya ng pagtakbo bilang alkalde ng Quezon City. Alamin natin ang kanyang mga plano at programa para sa kanyang kababayan. Okay, so let's say you, you have done so many things as vice mayor, but now you declared your candidacy for, yeah. for mayor in Quezon City. Ano pa bang gusto mong gawin? Bakit mo gusto mag-mayor? Well, tingin ko marami pang dapat gawin. Ano? Because mm -hmm. I think that uh, 
Uh, mer- tina- meron tayong tinatawag na Gini coefficient. Ewan ko mm-hmm. kung naalam niyo sa, yes. sa economics, mm-hmm. di ba? Na yung gap between the richest and the poorest. Mm-hmm. So in other words, even if your income is high, mm-hmm. and which, it, which it is in Quezon City, our, our budget, which we just passed a few days ago, is about 21.5 billion. No? It's mm-hmm. very high. Mm-hmm. But they say in economics that if your Gini coefficient is, is big, meaning the gap between the richest and the poorest is wide, mm-hmm. um, there is re- no real progress or development. Kailangan talaga that yung mga lahat ng taong bayan have achieved a certain level of standards of, of standards no sa kanilang pamumuhay at tingin ko well a mayor can only do so much so, so our mayor uh, during his nine years he concentrated on very uh, timely issues like climate change for example like disaster risk reduction and he started of course our housing program which i i, I loaned him for no um but again nine years is really really short for long-term projects and and i feel that um, there's still a lot to be done, especially in that area of of, um, of of lessening the gap between the rich and the poor, or in other words, bringing the level of, of life of the poorest to the to a higher uh, level, no, uh, so that they can enjoy good education, they can also good, enjoy good healthcare, um, they can have opportunities for housing, uh-huh. no. So these basic human rights, um, we should go back to them. Pag sinabing ano yung una mong gusto gawin. I was gonna say it's really una Uh-oh. fixing good housekeeping in city hall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kasi tingin ko with good internal governance, mas marami pa tayong makokolekt ng revenue eh. at mas mm-hmm. makokolekt ng mga uh, kung baga um, uh, pondo uh-huh. no na higher pa din na 21.5. Uh-huh. Uh, so with good internal governance and how do you do that? Again, adopt technologies, mm-hmm. reduce face-to-face interaction because that causes corruption. Mm-hmm. Um, kung pwede ba yung transaction sa bahay, gawin na sa bahay, di ba? Para mas mag- maging maginhawa ang buhay ng mga taxpayers natin and therefore mas magbabayad sila. Mm-hmm. Um, in other words, let's adopt technology. Let's automate uh, the way we run our city hall. Mm-hmm. Let's collect the proper taxes and fees. And mm-hmm. then lahat yan, um, let's allocate properly uh, to our people. Eh, yung para naman sa mga negosyante, Masyado daw mara- mataas ang buwis dito sa Quezon City. Alam mo, pag-aralan natin yan. Gusto okay. ko talagang pag-aralan yan. Kasi sabi sa akin ng mga negosyante, mm-hmm. kaya sila nag under the table, nagpapalangis, mm-hmm. o tawag ba dyan, papadulas. papadulas. Kasi okay. na, mataas yung buwis. Sabi ko, eh kung, ang, ang tanong ko sa kanila, eh kung i-adjust natin, mm-hmm. willing ba kayo na, ano rin, magbayad ng tamang buwis? Kasi actually, syempre, corruption is two-sided, di ba? Mm-hmm. Hindi lang naman lagi natin i-blame yung nasa gobyerno. Mm-hmm. Kung yung tao sa private sector din naman, ay hindi rin naman binabribe yung nasa gobyerno, um, uh, hindi naman rin siguro magiging ganun ka, ka brave yung nasa gobyerno. In other words, we also also have to train our our taxpayers na let's let's work together here. What is good for you? Uh, what what is wrong with our current taxation system? Let's work mm-hmm. together here. But in exchange, can you also pay the right taxes? So, anong may expect ng mga magulang sa, ng Quezon City para sa mga anak nila kung na manggagaling kay Mayor Joy Bel- Belmonte? Oh. Well, una, lahat ng mga tingin kong uh, nagbibigay problema sa isang magulang para sa pagpapadala ng anak niya sa school. Oh. Alimbawa, yung anak niya gutom. Hmm. So, siguro mag-i-institute tayo ng mas malalawak ng mga feeding programs para sa mga anak natin. Hmm. Pangalawa, yung anak niya walang baon. Hmm. Pwede tayo mag-subsidize no, hmm. sa mga talagang mahihirap na mga bata para makapasok lang sila sa school. Lahat ng mga kagamitan, kaya natin ibigay yan sa mga bata, di ba? Uh, tapos, kasi ito yung mga primary for education. Mm-hmm. Tapos kung kaya pa, bakit hindi? Uniforme, sapatos, etc. Kasi ayaw naman natin na ma-stigmatize yung bata. Bakit yung classmate ko may uniform, ako wala. Uh-huh. So, nakaka-affect ng, ng, ng self-esteem. So, ito mga basic na pang kailangan ng isang bata para makapasok sa school. Uh, pero ang goal ko, 100% ng ating mga school age children must be in school. And so everything that prevents them from being in school, we will try to address. So what can Mayor Joy Belmonte do for senior citizens? For senior citizens, basically all the ordinances that we've passed, maintenance drugs. So we begin with the maintenance drugs. We can, no? Kung, mm. kung, kung kailangan nila, ha? Para sa kanilang uh, araw pang araw. Oh, mahirap na kung di nila kailangan. Hindi nila kailangan. <laughs> Doon yun mo. Diba, syempre, kailangan. Uh-oh. Ayoko lang kasi lahatin muna because there's a budgetary issue, no? But those are things that they all should be getting, okay? Um, yung yung mga vaccines, laboratory expenses, kung kaya natin magkaroon ng ger- geriatric wards sa ating mga hospital na, na para lang sa senior citizens, gagawin natin yan. Home for the aged. Nakakagulat kasi wala tayong home for the aged. Are you going to build one? Yes, there's an ordinance already and we will build one. In fact, I already promised that to the sector. We will build a home for the aged for them. And apart from that, a halfway home. Kasi marami tayong nakikita mga senior citizens na may dementia, naliligaw, 
kay hindi alam ng mga nakakapulot ng mga barangay mm -hmm. na nakakita sa namin dadalhin tong senior na to hindi niya alam kung taga saan siya so may halfway home din kung saan may mga social workers na tutulong sa kanya para mahanap niya yung tahanan niya di ba mm -hmm. a hospice care tingin ko ito yung mga elderly natin na na siguro malalaning kanila mga sakit etc but we just need to provide them with uh, the proper um, care, no? Yeah, um, pagmamalasakit sa e, kanila. Yung mga mas, may sakit na walang pambayad tumakbo sa ospital, anong magagawa mo para sa kanila? E, pwede natin silang sagutin mm -hmm. yung kanilang mga uh, fees, no? Kung lalong-lalo na yung mga basic illnesses lang naman ng sak sakit nila, tapos yung mga hospital. Well, una, kung, kung uh, government-owned hospital ng Quezon City, dapat ilibre na nga eh. Kung kakayanin talaga, ilibre na natin eh. Kung, uh, kung kaya naman. Before we started together yung Lingkod ER program, yes, di ba? Uh -huh. Yung pupunta yung tao, namamatay na doon sa ER. Sa ER, uh -huh. tapos wala pang pambili ng gamot, so medyo natutuloy yan. Uh -huh. When we started that program, di ba dapat may mga supporta sa mga ganong classic yes. cases? Can we expect the same thing? Yes, yes, you can. As a health centers, ano yung mga priorities mo? Ay, well, una, uh -oh. um, ang number one sumbong sa akin, walang doktor, sapat na doktor. Mm -hmm. Nung in-interview ko naman yung uh, health department nila, natin, no, mm -hmm. sasabihin nila, kasi ang mahal ng sweldo ng isang doktor. Mm -hmm. May mismatch yung, yung, uh, yung sabatas na dapat sweldo ng isang doktor dun sa talagang dapat kinikita ng isang doktor. Mm -hmm. Kailangan niya ng national legislation para mabago. Mm -hmm. Pero meron ako nakuusap na pwede palang through digital technology again, no? Uh -oh. So may screen ka lang na malaki. Uh -oh. So la basta lahat ng health center kailangan lang na may nurse. Mm -hmm. Kasi kinukuha lang naman yung vitals eh. Uh -oh. yung, yung, uh -oh. So, pagpasok ng pasyente, kunin ng nurse yung vitals. Okay, nasa TV si doktor, to turn on mo ngayon, si doktor uh -oh. nasa office, may apat siya health center na inaalagaan. Mm -hmm. no, I-feed lang ni nurse yung vitals, no, mm -hmm. yung mga uh, basic na mga datos tungkol sa pasyente. Malalaman na ng doktor, more or less, kung ano yung sakit ng taong to. Uh -oh. no. Pero hindi siya physically present. No? Uh -huh. um, tapos pwede na niyang i-refer. So maayos na referral system din. So doon sa primary healthcare facilities natin, health centers, uh -huh. malalaman na rin kung kailangan i-refer sa secondary o sa tertiary. At pakikipag-partner na rin tayo dito sa mga secondary and tertiary para pag na-refer, mabilis na silang uh, nabibigyan ng attention. So ibig sabihin, no? pag ako may sakit, pumunta ako sa, sa health center, alam ko na merong doktor na mag address nun, kahit kausap ko lang siya sa computer. Pwede, oo. oo, oo. May doktor. Pero syempre uh -huh. kung physical kali present mas uh, makakatulong yon at pag-aaralan din natin yung issue ng sweldo kasi baka naman may iba pang paraan para uh -huh. maitaas natin yung yung sweldo outside of yung ang um, sinasabing dapat sweldo sa batas baka there are other benefits that we can give also eh yung gamot kamusta ang support ng City Hall sa mga gamot sa mga health eh, centers eh ngayon kulang pa rin yan na rin ang sumbong rin sa akin kulang ang gamot kumpara uh -huh. sa health center walang sapat na gamot uh, tingin ko number one, kailangan lagi may gamot sa health center no uh -huh. at isa rin sa ginawa natin dati uh, ay yung chits, yung computerized health management system. Ideally kasi dapat, ikaw, uh, uh, Miss Maite, pasyente ka, pupunta ka sa health center na malapit sa bahay mo, kailangan, ipatype in ko lang yung pangalan mo, lalabas na yung history mo, di ba? Katulad nung sa, hosp sa private hospitals. Um, sinimula na ito, uh, ngayon, pero may mga kinks, hindi siya fully implemented. Gusto natin talaga fully implemented ito para ikaw sa isang health center ka lang talaga pupunta. Mm -hmm. Tapos, proactive si doctor. So, pwede niyang sabihin, Miss Maite, three years ka nang hindi pupunta sa health center, baka gusto mong dumalaw mm -hmm. uh, para magpa-check up, di ba? So, dapat medyo ganun yung, yung style na iniisip ko. Sa kabila ng kanyang magagandang ginawa sa lungsod ng Quezon, hindi pa rin may iwasan ang mga pagbatikos at puna sa kanyang pamamahala at personal na buhay. Joy, nagdeklara ka na mag-mayor eh, pero may mga, ano ba yung mga binabato sa inyo, sa inyo ng mga tao? Bakit hindi ka karapat dapat? Ay, una, um, sinasabi, hindi daw ako marunong magsuspend din ng klase. So, so, pero yung ilang beses ko na yan nasagot. At tingin ko, um, sinasabi kasi na, ay, hindi yan pwede maging mayor dahil hindi marunong magsuspend. Actually, hin napaka, napaka simplistic and mababaw uh, na dahilan yun. No? So, hindi ko na siya sasagotin by, by giving importance to that. No? Um, second is, uh, ang binabato sa akin, uh, maselan daw ako dahil uh, mayaman na bata or something, di ba? Mm -hmm. Nagaling sa, sa may kayang pamilya. So gusto ko lang siguro sabihin na, alam mo, para maging isang archaeologist, kailangan mag-camping ka ng buwan sa isang bundok. Oh. At naranasan ko na na tumira sa bundok, mm -hmm. na walang CR, na walang running water, um, na, na walang mga basic facilities. Pero maselan ka daw saan? Maselan ka daw saan? 
eh sinasabi nila ay aristokrata, uh, ganyan. Di ba yung usual? Ay, anak mayaman, gayto, ganyan. Mm-hmm. Eh, ayoko naman mag- maging mapagpanggap. Hindi kami mayaman, pero hindi naman kami mahirap. Pero siguro lang hindi nila alam, natingin ko dapat malaman nila, na nung natapos ako ng kolehyo, uh, ako ay nagtrabaho sa bukid nun bilang isang volunteer teacher. At dun sa tinabahuhan kong baryo, walang um, tubig. Okay, tubig ulan ang iniinom namin, ang panligo namin. Walang kuryente. Okay, kandila ang gamit namin sa pagcalculate ng mga grades ng mga bata at pag at paggawa ng lesson plan. Nagturo ako from 7:30 in the morning hanggang 4:30 ng hapon. Wala akong break kundi lunch break na 30 minutes. No. Ah, uh, sino to mga batang tinuturuan niyo? Anak ng mga magsasaka mm-hmm. sa isang baryo sa Bukid Non. Mm-hmm. At ito ay isang volunteer program na sinalihan ko uh, kung saan hindi ka pwedeng pumili kung saan ka dapat ipadala. Papadala ka sa lugar na walang tao mm-hmm. na may ganong klaseng uh, kakayanan at uh, ang sweldo ay napakaliit. In, mm-hmm. Ang kinikita ko doon 800 pesos sa isang buwan. Mm-hmm. Pero may uh, savings pa ako doon kasi doon sa baryo na yun, wala ka namang mabibili. So, mm-hmm. marami pa ako naipon doon sa 800 pesos na yun. Na, 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 ginawa ko, nagtanim ako sa makuran ko. Nagtanim ako ng ng kalabasa, ng iba-ibang mga gulay no, mm-hmm. na ginamit namin pangkain. Mm-hmm. Tapos marunong ako kumatay ng manok. Mm-hmm. Uh, kasi walang refrigerator dahil walang kuryente. Mm-hmm. So, halos linggo-linggo, pupunta ako sa palengke, bumibili ng live chicken, kinakatay namin yan, mm-hmm. at uh, hinahanda na yan, at yan ang kinakain namin for the week. Mm-hmm. No? So, yan, yan, these are things that people don't know about me, which I did. No? And so, um, hindi totoo yung sinasabi nilang, ah, you live the comfortable life, mas selan ka so hindi ka makaka-relate sa taong bayan in fact it was my experience in Bukid Non that made me realize that I have to serve the people because ang laki ng discrepancy ng buhay sa siyudad at buhay sa lalawigan na naranasan ko may experience ka pala sa farming di ba ikaw rin yung nagsimula ng urban farming dito oh, totoo mm-hmm. uh, kaya nung nung uh, inoffer sa akin ng Department of Agriculture ang urban farming mm-hmm. sinabi nila walang yung so na gusto nga umampo ng ng urban farming kasi yung stereotype na yung pagsasaka ay dapat ginagawa walang sa probinsya. Pero ako, uh, agad-agad kong tinanggap yung project kasi alam ko na pwede naman magtanim kahit sa ang lugar. No? Uh, because of my experience also in the province. Ano yung mga bagay-bagay na hindi alam ng mga tao tungkol kay Joy Balmonte? Um, well, mahilig ako sa fish balls. Uh, alam yan ng mga staff ko kasi pag nakakita ako ng fish balls, agad binibilhan na nila ako ng, ng isang, isang cup ng fish balls. Tapos, uh, minsan, pinitira din ako, ay, kumakain ng fish balls. Uh, mapagpanggap. Pero actually, hindi. Favorite ko yun. <laughs> uh, um, siguro isa yon ano pa ba? Hindi, sobrang low maintenance ko. Kaya pag sinabi sa akin, ay, gobyerno yan, mangungurakot yan, uh, hindi yan totoo. Kasi, actually, ang paglingkod, ang, 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 aking pagpasok sa politika, tingin ko ay vocation. Vocation na lang eh. Kasi pwede naman akong sa private sector naman talaga magtrabaho eh. Pero tingin ko okay na naman ako. Simple lang pangangailangan ko. Wala nga akong alahas. Hindi nga ako mahilig. Hindi ako mahilig sa designer goods. Hindi ako mahilig sa pamamahaling mga produkto. Bumibili ako sa ukay-ukay. Alam mo yun. Dahil nung bata pa tayo, might eh. Diba? Pinapakita ko sa'yo, eto, binili ko sa ukay-ukay. 200 pesos lang. O happy na ako dyan, no? Kaya, ang paglingkod ay vocation. Hindi yan pagkakataon para kumita. Hindi yan pagkakataon para magkaroon ka ng titulo. Yan ay pagkakataon para magdudulot ka ng pagbabago sa mga buhay ng mga taong pinagiling ko na doon. Sabi nga ni Joy, siya ay isang simpleng tao na may simpleng buhay. Pero puno ng pangarap para sa kanyang mga pinasasapupan. It all boils down to what is the priority of your leadership. And my priority is the people of Quezon City. No, kailangan maramdaman ng bawat mamamayan ng ating lungsod ang ang ang, uh, ang biyaya ng lungsod sa kanilang buhay, ang kalinga sa kanilang mga buhay. Thank you very much, Joy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maite. Oh. Uh, maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng mga nanonood na ating mga uh, palatuntunan sa araw. Oh, yan, ang dami pa lang gusto gawin.